What is going on, Airsofters? Uh, today I am bringing you the long-awaited and finally complete loadout. So um, let's get started. What I am wearing, these are uh, both made by Rothko. This is a uh, ACU combat shirt made by Rothko. And the uh, pants are just regular ACU trousers. Uh, a belt, or for the belt, I am wearing just, I believe it's a Dickies belt from Walmart or something like that. Uh, it's, it's not very tactical, but it uh, helps me keep my pants up. So starting on my left side, it's going to be on your right, are my patches. I have the uh, PVC wearing your flag patch. And the uh, official Reach and Clear patch that I had uh, one off of Instagram from a, uh, a buddy of mine on there. Towards my right side, it's going to be on your left. I run the reverse um, PVC patch. It's the same patch, just uh, regular reverse. And then a uh, custom call sign patch that I had made. And my call sign is B11. Now for knee pads, I had first gotten these when I first got back into airsofting. It was probably about two years ago. And um, these pads have definitely held up. I mean, they look pretty bulky, but they have saved my knees countless amount of times. Now you're probably wondering what these uh, knee pads are. And these are ProTech knee pads. Um, for those of you that don't know, ProTech is a uh, skate uh, company, I guess if that's what you want to call them. Uh, yeah, these these are uh, skateboarding knee pads. These are made for like uh, uh, the Mega Ramp, um, Half Pipes, everything among those lines of skating. Um, I think I'm probably the only one that I've ever seen run skate knee pads. Or, yeah, skate knee pads that are for skateboarding. But um, these definitely hold up. I mean, you slide your leg in there, and then you fold it over, slide it in that loop, put it on there, and it's good to go. These things have padding for days. I can't count how many slides I've done with these things on and how many times these things have saved my knees. Uh, knees are very important. Um, so yeah, get some good pads. They'll, uh, I highly recommend these Protex. Check them out, get them. For boots, I'm running some uh, Brahma, Brahma boots, let's see, I'm running the Brahma Sahara boot. Um, I had gotten these from Walmart when I first got into Airsoft, and uh, I am quite surprised with these things. They've held up for quite some time now. I've had these things for probably about uh, two years, two and a half years now, and the only thing that I really had to do to them is just get new laces, and I got some... <clears throat> better laces for them, and they've held up. Uh, I don't believe they're steel toe. Nope, they are not steel toe. Um, yeah, these, these boots are pretty comfortable. Like I said, the only problem that I've ever had with them is just the, uh, the laces, but I got new ones, so we are good to go. So now, I'm going to start with all the gear that I run on myself. I'm going to start with the head. Uh, let me grab all that gear right now. I believe this is made by Lancer Tactical. It is a uh, Mitch 2001 NVG. I got in this helmet and it was just everything that I had expected. Um, as you can tell, I've done a bunch of work to it. I have custom painted it. I had thrown a forgotten Sharpie and put my Malone label on there. And I had done some uh, 17 tally marks. 17 tally marks for representing like successful missions if that's how you want to look at it but I just threw that on there because it looked cool and 17 is my uh, favorite and lucky number so starting with the right side I had made a uh, homemade um, reverse IR patch it's uh, it definitely looks pretty cool I had just gotten the picture of the flag off of Google it it gave it that worn down and afghan and back look, and I just thought it was really cool. So I made it into a patch. <clears throat> and on the top, I have an MS-2000 replica. Um, 
I don't really need the real deal because I am not official military and that gear is highly expensive and I don't want to pay that much for something that I could risk damaging and money would just go down the drain. <clears throat> now for my left side I run the Contour Roam. Um, this is a very nice camera in my opinion. Uh, it's held up great so far. I've had it for, for probably about two months, give or take. It's a real good uh, camera. I would definitely recommend it. <clears throat> and above that I have another homemade and custom uh, call sign patch. Again, it's my call sign is B11 and I just uh, downloaded a certain font and then made it and that was that. And then I had ordered all the Velcro that you see on my helmet from e-bike because when I ordered this helmet it did not come with Velcro. All it came with was just all the padding on the inside and the uh, chin strap and the helmet itself of course. <clears throat> the padding is really comfortable. Uh, it comes with four more little uh, littler pads. I just took them out because I had arranged it to uh, my noggin and um, comfort. So towards the back, I have two V lights in green. They're both strobe, pretty cool. <clears throat> I usually run those during night games when we play at uh, our spot to signal that I'm down or hit or whatever, or I'll just leave them on and look tactical. <clears throat> now here I have my PPC State Classic patch. Um, a lot of people say see it and they think it's pretty cool, so just left it on there. And here is just uh, some bungee, paracord, whatever you want to call it, that I had just uh, taken and just threw on the back of my helmet. Uh, in my opinion, it looks pretty darn cool. So there's my helmet. Oh, I had also forgot to mention, I run the uh, Mechanics Gloves. These gloves are just phenomenal. I th they definitely hold up out on the field. Um, got good grip, super comfortable, easy on your hands, good airflow. Um, get these gloves, they're really good. Below everything else, I run just a uh, an all black nylon balaclava. Really comfortable, and um, it uh, it shields me from BBs a lot better, and uh, it also helps out with this uh, this vicious beard I have of mine. So the rest of my gear doesn't hold on it. And for those of you that have beards, you know what I'm talking about. It's not very fun. And uh, on my neck, I run. Just a regular Jack Daniels um, bandana. I just tie it around my neck and it protects my neck. I have a Shamog, but it's summertime here in Arizona, or it's gonna be summertime here in Arizona, and it can get really hot. So I eliminated that and I just took a really, like the best bandana I had and threw it on my kit. For my face mask, I run just a regular standard half mask that I have modified to fit my face. Um, it was really easy. I just cut off the, uh, the fabric and then trimmed the wire and then wired it or formed it to my face and then did all the other whatnots to it. My iPro, I have, I believe they're X3000 or something like that. I got them off Amazon. I'm gonna be having, or I'm gonna have, um, all the names of everything in the description below, so um, if you want to check anything out, just go below and there it all is. But uh, these these goggles, they're really nice. Um, they're tinted and black, so it kind of keeps the sun out of my face. And uh, they're low profile. They're just, they're really great goggles. I mean, I run these during the day when we do play night games and uh, when we go to Vanguard or something like that. I will... Uh, run these when all the lights are on. And when the lights are off or we're doing a night op, I'll run these uh, Lancer Tacticals. They're also really comfortable. I had uh, taken out the little airflow things in there so I can get even more airflow because uh, goggles 
tend to fog, and um, fog prevents you from seeing, and not being able to see is not very good. So moving on, we have, oh, well, for my plate carrier, I have the uh, Condor MOPC. And MOP st or MOPC stands for Modular Operator Plate Carrier. Uh, this thing is phenomenal. I mean, it's super lightweight, super comfortable, and um, I started getting more and more into Milsim, and uh, looked into this vest, and I would have to say it was a definitely a great investment. So let's get started on it. So I'll start from bottom and I work my way up to the top. Now for the bottom I have the uh, Condor M4 triple double stack M4 mag pouch and um, it had came with the uh, elastic straps that hold the mags in but that didn't work so well for my uh, mag pulls or mag pull um, mag assists so I just took them out and just left my mags in there and I, I'm uh, cautious on um, how I run all my mags and everything like that. So now starting with the mags, the three mags that you see here in the front are um, Elite Force mid caps. They hold 140 rounds. Um, they don't feed too bad, but then again, um, I didn't really break these mags in properly. But uh, they definitely work all right, but I'm going to have to uh, take some time out of the day to uh, break them in properly so they'll actually work for me. Um, like I said, I had gotten these uh, Magpul, I believe they're 5.56 five, Mag Assists. And again, these are all mid caps in the front. Now towards the back, I run three high caps. Oops, three high caps. And they're just regular Echo 1 you know what? No, I take that back. They are uh, all GTAC. Now, if I ever do plan on attending a uh, Milsim event, I will swap these high caps out, and I will just throw in some uh, mid caps. It's simple as that. Just how me and my team play. Um, we play very fast paced, and uh, we're always we're always moving. So there really isn't time to. Uh, sit around with the speed loader and let loading these bad boys back up so I just run three mid and three high <clears throat> so moving up to the right I have the Condor um, walkie talkie pouch and inside that I run a uh, Motorola talk about um, these aren't the best of walkie talkies but they definitely work. I mean, last weekend we, no, not last weekend. Yeah, yeah, last weekend we had a night op, and I had dropped this thing in some mud, and I got this thing just coated in mud. You can still see, see some of the mud that's on there. But um, they definitely work. I mean, like I said, they are not top quality of all uh, walkie-talkies out there. But if you just want to start using comms units, there you go. I have to turn that off. To the left, I have the uh, Condor uh, multi-purpose pouch. I had gotten it, and I just use it as an admin pouch. It's um, it's it's pretty great, Matt, or uh, pretty great, pretty great um, admin pouch. It definitely holds up. Uh, See, so you got a flap right here. Pull that down. That exposes where you can keep some uh, map items but I don't carry a map in there so I just left it empty I pull this flap up and this is where I keep a sharpie a pen a notepad with a map of the place where we play at and inside the notepad is rules and um, game types and everything else like that and in here I keep my knife Oops. now going towards the back um, there is a zipper, you just undo that, and inside there I keep the other walkie-talkie, a whistle to uh, get game started, and a lighter. <clears throat> That's about it for that. 
Now, just patches that I have on the front are um, a uh, big black and white American flag patch, and below that is a uh, red, white, or not red, white, and blue, red, gold, and blue um, U, or not U.S., Arizona flag patch. Uh, like I said, I am from Arizona, so why not rock the Arizona patch? And for the top, uh, I can't remember what sling this is. I had ordered it off Amazon for like no more than 10 bucks, but it's it's definitely held up for the past two years that I've had it, and it works. I had ran it through the uh, shoulder pads that came with this vest, so I don't have anything bearing down on my neck and tearing it up. So let's jump to the side of the vest. <clears throat> I don't run anything on the sides of my vest due to the fact that I run a uh, second line in a battle belt or whatever you want to call it. So the Condor MOPC had came with a cummerbund that had molly all along the side of it. And um, I, had I had eliminated that and I had bought a uh, Ferro Concepts, I believe it's just a 4 inch elastic cummerbund. And this thing has definitely held up. This thing is amazing. It keeps my vest tight on me and doesn't bounce around or anything when I'm in full sprint from one side of the field to the other. So it definitely holds up. I mean, it's it's awesome. I highly recommend it. Um, I had ordered it off of feralconcepts.com for um, all in all about 55 bucks. So... Thank you, Feral Concepts. Towards the back, I carry a uh, modular um, assault pack. Also, a uh, um, hydration bladder inside of it as well. Uh, let's see. I put a uh, U.S. flag patch on the back just to let whoever knows behind me that I am American. And I had also taken these straps that came with this MAP and um, rigged it up to my vest to where it keeps everything inside the two pouches nice and tight. So, or well, be because before I, I had rigged this up to the, the MAP, everything inside these pouches were just bouncing around and it would let everybody know where I was while in full sprint. So I tied them down with those two buckles. Uh, may not look the greatest, but it definitely works. For, on this side, I carry some zip ties just in case if we ever do play some Milsom, of, uh, Milsom games. I have uh, zip ties for whatever game we decide to play. Moving on towards the bottom, start with the right, with the, uh, right side. I have just this uh, little clip that holds my Oakley OD Green Fingerless knuckle gloves. Um, I rocked these gloves before I had gotten my uh, my mechanics gloves. I mean, they definitely worked, but I had gotten the mechanics gloves because they were a lot better than these ones, in my opinion. So I just, uh, I didn't want to not use these gloves because that would just be a waste of money. So I rigged them up to my vest just in case if my mechanics gloves get uh, super muddy or I rip one and whatever the case may be. I have these gloves right here. I can just easily take them off and uh, put my mechanics gloves back on here, put it back on and rock these gloves. Moving on, I run two chem lights that I had rubber, or a rubber put a rubber band down on them so it keeps them in there. Now on the very left, I have um, a body mag pack. I keep two high caps in there. So, say somebody is running behind me and they're like, "Hey, man, let me get a uh, let me get a spare mag." I'll just tell them to unbuckle this clip back here and grab themselves a magazine. Now I'm gonna be jumping into my uh, my second line. So starting from my left. To my right, which will be your right to your left. For my pistol, I run the uh, 
HMK USP45. Um, I first got this thing, and it was just your standard everyday pistol that I didn't really know too much about pistols at the time. I just went to Walmart and got it. Um, when I had gotten it, one of the mags had broke on me, so I stopped using it for a while. And I thought that was kind of unfortunate because I had only owned it for so long and it had just um, broke on me. So eventually I ordered uh, some more mags, which are over here, and um, they hold up really good. So put that away. Now jumping into the holster. The holster is a... Um, I believe it's a tie gear or condor drop leg holster, something like that. But I had modified it and eliminated some of the things that came with it to make it into a uh, a hip holster. And it still uh, still hangs a little low, so I had put in a strap that um, sits on my leg, goes right across. And it's not that bad. It's it works, definitely works. It saves um, saved me a bunch of money. So I didn't have to buy a, a whole new pistol holster. <clears throat> so moving on, I have the Condor Gadget Pouch. Um, it's got Molly on the back. Um, I just keep the tool for the mags in this front little zipper. I have another one right here just in case if I lose it. So got the tool right there and underneath this buckle, open it up. I've got a little flashlight that I can mount on my helmet when we're doing night games so I can see when I'm exchanging gear and whatnot. I just turn it on and we're good to go. Um, I carry some batteries and fortunately I am out of CO2 but I usually keep CO2 in there as well. Now going further back to these zippers back here I keep my dead rag. Um, my opinion, uh, dead rags work very well. It lets other players know that you're hit and you're down and everything else. Um, carry a dead rag so you don't keep getting shot. And moving on from my dump pouch, I have the Maxpedition Roly Poly pouch. Now I had recently just just discovered a uh, Maxpedition and. Um, I watched a bunch of reviews on YouTube about it and looked on the internet and I was just looking to um, purchase this. And when I um, got it in, it was probably one of the uh, best orders that I could ever make. Because Maxpedition, they're really good with all their gear. And uh, as you saw, it just folds up like this when not in use. <clears throat> Excuse me, pull the slap and there is your dump out. It can hold probably about to seven to eight mags, and I usually run six mags, and I believe one extra in the gun. And it holds all of them, and it's great, and I like it a lot. So, go on Amazon or Maxpedition.com or whatever the website is, and get yourself one of these pat, pat, uh, dump pouches. Let me show you the Maxpedition versus the uh, Condor dump pouch. Max, the Max Edition, I don't want to say it's stiff, but it's definitely sturdy. It doesn't uh, wobble around as much as the Condor. Keeps everything in there nice and uh, fit and snug and everything else. Versus the Condor, you just throw it in there and everything just bounces around on you. So, it's really low profile, definitely lightweight. Um, so, there's the two dump pouches come right next to one another. Get out of here. So, here's my dump pouch. Now running on to the uh, <coughs> pistol holsters. The pistol holsters are Condor as well. And they have Molly on the back. You just pull these uh, Velcro flaps open and there are your mags. I run the two H&K USB 45 mags for my H&K USB 45. Now jumping all below that, I have a uh, contour, I believe it's a rigger's belt. Um, I could be wrong. Like I said earlier in the video, I have everything down below in the description. So if you have a question about it, just look on down there and it'll have it set up. This is the Echo One Stag 15 M4 Carbine. Uh, this is the JP01.
Um, I got this thing two and a half years ago, and it has definitely held up to every single test that I have put it through. Uh, this thing is just amazing. As you can tell, I have put it through a lot of custom work. So let's get right into that. Your standard uh, crane stock that I had came with it. Just right here, I had thrown on a uh, Pat Tillman wristband. I had replaced the standard M4 pistol grip, or motor grip, whatever you want to call it, with this one. Upper and lower receiver is still the same from when I got it. I just threw a monster sticker on there. Oh, and pop open the dust cover, and I had engraved duty and fate on the dust cover. I just gave it that more tactical and Afghan and back look. I had thrown some Troy flip-up sights on here, so just in case if my uh, EOTech goes down, got my flip-up sights right there. So for my sling point, I have a Magpul just um, rail sling attachment. Ordered that uh, probably a year and a half ago, and it definitely works. I mean, I can hold this thing by the finger with it, and it's not going anywhere. EOTech Replica 551. Um, I had ordered it, this off of Amazon about a year and a half ago, and unfortunately, Amazon no longer sells the replicas. It is very hard to find replicas now for as cheap as I got it, and I had got it for about 30 bucks. And it's very unfortunate that we can't really find these things anymore. I mean, I'm absolute absolutely lucky that I snagged this thing. Uh, the only downfall is when I went to a Vanguard game, this uh, kid with a Polar Star had a uh, shot in it out. So I uh, wasn't too upset about it because it, in my opinion, it just showed me that this thing held up through every single test that I've ever put it through. And my opinion, just how it got shot out, it uh, makes it look like I went to Afghan and back. Now moving forward, I have, I believe it's a UTG 7-inch free float rail. I have uh, a replica PEC 15 just for, uh, just for looks. I mean, it looks real cool, in my opinion. This is a Ultra Fire um, Cree something something. Links are in the description below. But this thing has, I think, five different uh, five different light features. It's got a low, a medium, a high, an SOS, and a strobe. Now this thing is super bright. Let me just uh, shine this at the camera. Yeah. Um, imagine that getting shine in your face. Not too great. I have a Magpul angled foregrip. Um, when I first started getting an airsoft, I was all about vertical grips, and I thought these things looked really ridiculous. But I've come to learn that these things are super, super comfortable on your hand. It's better than gripping the hell out of your foregrip and getting a cramp in your hand. Versus the angled foregrip, it's just Relaxing your hand on there, it's very sturdy, very comfortable, and very awesome looking on your gun. On the inside of the gun, I have the uh, Troy version 2 full metal gearbox with um, a, uh, I believe it is Mad Bull or something like that, with the hop up unit and everything else like that. Um, inner barrel, still the same, I just carved it down. No, I take that back. It is the Troy, Troy Industries inner barrel, the uh, four inch. And for the outer barrel, it is. Let me uh, let me check my database real quick. It is. I can't remember the name. JG JG outer barrel. It is four and a half inches. Now for the suppressor, I have an Enjoy five inch aluminum suppressor. Um, this thing, it's pretty awesome. I mean, what I just did there, I turned it into an amplifier. I mean, I just screwed this off, it can be an amplifier, put it back on, and just be a regular suppressor. Whatever you're choosing. It works. So, that's my gun, saw my vest, saw my second line, saw my helmet, 
So what I'm wearing, let me throw all the gear on for you guys and I'll show you a, uh, a complete overview of what everything looks like on me. Here it is everybody, this is my um, Milsim ACU Assault Loadout. Uh, super comfortable, super lightweight. Um, I'm always running around out on the field and uh, to me this setup that I have here is just absolutely perfect. So. Thanks for watching my video. Um, be sure to give this uh, video a like and hit that subscribe button because I have tons and tons, of, tons and tons of videos coming your way. Also, check out my team on Facebook. We are Bravo Five Two O Airsoft, and also follow us on Instagram at Bravo Five Two O Airsoft Arizona. Thank you for watching. Keep on airsofting. We can fight our